sometimes controversial, always politically incorrect, and pro-life without exception, without compromise, and without apology. It's the Pro-Life America podcast with your hosts, Sarah Waits and the president of Life Dynamics, Mark Crutcher. Welcome to the Pro-Life America podcast. I'm Mark Crutcher, as you heard, and joining me is Sarah Waits. Hello, everyone. Lurking on the other side of the table. We want to welcome you to the program. Sarah, as we see... (laughs) <laughs> the left is losing their minds over this they decision. Are, it's like they have brain aneurysms or something. You know, I think we need to create a game called Pro-Choice Freakout Bingo, because every time something like this happens, you have A, some sort of stunt or crashing a Catholic church service, either naked or dressed up in the handmaiden's tail outfits. You have pro-choicers throw stuff on pro-lifers. You have some sort of bizarre freakouts that they do. And then you also have violence, which we have seen in numerous cases, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Yeah. And another thing they're doing, uh, you've noticed that the coat hanger has made a reemergence. It kind of went away for a while, but it's back. We love the coat hanger. This is their big... And I'm still saying, we need to be holding their feet to the fire on this thing. Let's understand who's responsible for the coat hanger. It's the people wielding coat hangers. It's the people with the coat hangers in their hands. And those are always pro-choice people. Mm -hmm. Every woman that was ever killed, ever, by abortion. Legal or illegal. Legal or illegal. It could Mm -hmm. be in the most expensive pro-abortion Planned Parenthood facility in the country. Or it could be with a coat hanger. Mm -hmm. Every one of those women was killed or injured by somebody who was Mm pro-choice. Every single one of them. We're not responsible for the coat hanger abortions. They are. They're trying to make it look like we're responsible for it. They're trying to shift the blame Mm -hmm. for whatever coat hanger abortions might take place from them to us. But we're not going for it. And somebody needs to be pointing this out. Of course, if we had an honest media, Mm -hmm. they'd be the ones pointing it out. Mm -hmm. But we don't have that. No. You know, the fact is, if a woman dies from a coat hanger abortion, she was killed by somebody who was pro-choice. And she did so because she chose to have an illegal coat hanger abortion. Well, and the left loves to take this Hollywood version of what illegal abortion was like. Now, are we going to say that all illegal abortions never fit that narrative? No. But the bulk of them were done by legitimate physicians who were simply breaking the law. Right. It's mind-boggling that they get away with this, but they only get away with it for one reason. Yeah, because everyone lets them. Because the media won't call them on it. Yeah, shocker. The fact is, the reaction that these people are having to Mm -hmm. this potential Supreme Court decision are validating some things that we've been saying here for years. Mm -hmm. First off, I have said for years, I've written about this 15 years ago, that the closer we get to winning, the more violent they would become. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're seeing. That is Mm -hmm. precisely what we're seeing. The other thing that I've said for years, and I've even got some blowback on this from people who are pro-life that I think are somewhat naive... But nonetheless, um, is that these are not just people with whom we have a difference of opinion. You don't want to be in the position where you're calling people names or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, these people are savages. And there's two kind of people on the pro-abortion side. One are the savages. They know abortion is murder. They just don't care. The other group are people who are just simply stupid and don't know that the unborn child is a living human being. That's the vast minority of people on the pro-abortion side. Most of them just don't care. And now you have a lot of social media. I've been given some screenshots of social media posts where they're openly calling for violence, openly calling for Supreme Court justices to be murdered. Or just reacting to the violence that's happening from the pro-choice side saying, good, let it happen. Let's do more of this. Right. Caroline Riley, who is a writer for Rewire, which is an extremely pro-abortion publication, she tweeted in response to an article about the firebombing of a pro-life group. She tweeted, more of this. May these people never know a moment of peace or safety until they rot in the ground. Well, there's another one. I mean, we've got hundreds, thousands of these. But this guy, Simon Gwynn, mm-hmm. on um, Twitter, mm-hmm. he says, interesting real-life trolley problem in America now. If you had the chance to kill Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito, the two oldest right-wing Supreme Court judges, should you do it while Biden can still get his nominees to replace them confirmed? It's interesting 
as an abstract question, but becomes a real conundrum if, say, you're terminally ill and have little to lose yourself. But know that it could save many women's lives in the future. Wow. But, you know, the same side that's supporting abortion basically believes that killing can be used to solve whatever problem you've got going on. It's the way you solve the problem that's in front of you. Yeah, whether it be a social problem or a personal problem. What's happening here is a good thing in one way. It's exposing people to the reality Mm -hmm. of what kind of savages and low lives these people are. Yeah. But where is the media in all this? They're not going to talk about it. Just imagine that um, somebody had written that uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg should have been taken out and shot. Oh, the left would be up in arms. It, that would have been the lead story on the evening news for months. Mm-hmm. So this is the problem we have in the pro-life movement is we've always had to fight with not only the pro aborts but the media. So, But let's just say for a moment that these people honestly believe that they have 70% support of the American people. Then what are they worried about? Because the Supreme Court did not make abortion illegal. They just threw it into the political system. Mm-hmm. Well, the political system is where the majority opinion rules. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So what are they worried about? There are certain things that didn't change. They still own the mainstream media. Mm-hmm. They still own Hollywood. Mm-hmm. They still own the academic community. Mm-hmm. They still own the Democrat Party. They still have a stranglehold on social media platforms. And they're still getting boxcars full of money from billionaire eugenicists like Bill and Melinda Gates and Warren Buffett and George Soros and others. And now they're saying that 70% of the American people support their position. Well, if you believe that 70% supports your position, you'd want this to be in the political arena because yeah. you're going to win. Mm-hmm. But they don't believe that 70% numbers, right? They know for a fact they're lying. This pro-choice majority rhetoric has always been a lie, and now it's being exposed by their own behavior for the lie that it, that it is. Yeah. Their reaction to the Supreme Court decision proves that they've been lying through their teeth. There's a video circulating out there. From it's just a recap. Some of the things that these savages are doing out there in the public. And it is emblematic mm-hmm. of what I was talking about a moment ago about how the pro aborts behavior is exposing them for the kind of people that they are. They're not just people we have a disagreement with. These are fundamentally at the core different people. And I know this video is hard to look at. Parts of it are pretty horrific, but everybody needs to see it. A lot of it is like (laughs) stuff that we've posted on our people of choice website. Yeah. There's one that's got a doll of a baby that she's playing like she just had an abortion and she's beating on it. Mm -hmm. And based on what she's saying, I think she's had abortions. I think obviously she has, but yeah, there's always this kind of bizarre display that happens. It's but just... People need to go watch that video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we'll have the link to that in the description. Yeah, you need to go watch that video. It is mind-boggling to see this. Well, a number of the things that are in that video are some of the things that we're going to be talking okay, about ahead. here. So, in the last week, just to do a recap of some of the things that we have seen, the Concerned Women for America said that around 10 p.m. last weekend, A leftist who had previously harassed their staff by throwing coffee at them and yelling vulgar remarks at them and getting confrontational, ripped up their security system, flipped off the camera, and then peed on the door for good measure. Mm. I'll give you what guess as to what gender this person was. Well, there's only 90 to choose from. It's not fair to make me pick between 90 different genders, right? Well, it seems to me that when you come down to the pro-choice violence and vulgarity, you'll get a certain amount from women. But I think the most vile in your face tends to come from pro-choice men. Maybe that's just my interpretation of it. But from what I've seen, they tend to be the most aggressive. Well, they've got the most to lose from abortion going away. Mm -hmm. Right. The most notable example people have probably heard about is that the Wisconsin Family Actions Office was firebombed with Molotov cocktails. And they also graffitied on the outside of the building, if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. They also left anti-police tags and anarchy tags. Now, a group has come out claiming responsibility for that, a group called Jane's Revenge, And in the communique that they sent to a reporter, this thing is long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, says this was only a warning. We demand the disbanding of all anti-choice establishments, fake clinics, and violent anti-choice groups within the next 30 days. This is not a mere difference of opinion as some has framed it. Next time, the infrastructure of the enslavers will not survive. 
They go on to say, Wisconsin is the flashpoint, but we are all over the U.S. and we will issue no further warnings and we will not stop. We will not back down, nor will we hesitate to strike until the inalienable right to manage our own health is returned to us. We are not one group, but many. We are in your city. We are in every city. Your oppression only strengthens our accompliceship and resolve. Now, imagine Mm -hmm. that some pro-life organization. I was just about to say that. Put out of the old saying. We're going to give you 30 days to shut down. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you're not going to be safe. I'm telling you, we've seen this before. When there has been those, and they are extremely rare instances Mm -hmm. of violence committed by pro-life people against abortion clinics. I mean, in the Clinton administration, you had them station federal marshals at every abortion clinic in the country. Mm -hmm. Where is that now? Yeah. When is that going to happen now? Oh, if the pro-lifers had done this, this would be front page news. You wouldn't be going to the local Wisconsin journal to get this article. Right. This would be front page news. The Biden administration would be releasing a statement. Yeah. They'd be cracking down right now. Instead, mums the word. Not only mums the word, but you have reactions from Biden and the other people in his administration, this Jen Psaki character, Mm -hmm. basically giving tacit approval to these things, saying, well, it's just people that are passionate. They're passionate about this. And well, would that be their reaction if pro-lifers were doing it? Oh, a good example of that is how the group Ruth sent us, named after Ruth Bader Ginsburg, released the Supreme Court's conservative members' private addresses and posted, along with another group, a map so that people could find them, a map that has so far been viewed over 3,000 times. Again, if the pro-life movement had done this with the liberal justices, oh, right. th- the Biden administration would be coming out saying this is clearly an act of terrorism. But instead, they've defended that. In fact, Saki had this to say. So I know that there's an outrage right now, I guess, about uh, protests that have been peaceful to date. And we certainly continue to encourage that outside of judges' homes. And that's the president's position. So they do encourage it. Yeah. The double standard here is breathtaking. And it always has been. Mm -hmm. But that's what this particular issue and the way the pro aborts are reacting to it. That's what it's exposing is what kind of people they really are. Oh, yeah. And so my claim that they're savages and lowlifes is being bolstered mm-hmm. by their own behavior. Well, and the Wisconsin Family Action is not the only one to be set fire to. The Oregon Right to Life offices were attacked. They were set fire to. They used incendiary devices on a air conditioning unit, which exploded and caught fire. Fortunately, no one was harmed and the building damage was not too severe. Well, the point is that and then, this is going on everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's going on right here in Denton. Yeah, the Laredo house was vandalized. They had had spray painting all over the doors, the sign, basically calling it a fake clinic. Forced birth is murder, junk like that. And then in Portland, it seems like Antifa may be connected with the destruction of some pregnancy centers in Portland. Smash windows and graffiti that says FCPCs. And according to Andy No, a reporter, it seems like a list of addresses connected to Portland area CPCs has been collected by these people. So, I mean, it's going to continue going on. Yeah. Like I say, if these people honestly thought Mm -hmm. that they had the majority support of the American people, if they honestly believed that, it would not bother them at all to see this thing taken out of the courts and put into the political system. But they have spent almost five decades now making sure that doesn't happen because they know they can't win there. I think the big reason why all this stuff is not being given more attention by the national media is because they know this is a PR nightmare for the pro-choice movement. So they bury this stuff on page nine. Right. But the good news is this has now changed the battle Mm -hmm. in the future. We're going to be fighting on a battlefield of our choosing. When I say our, I mean the pro-life movement. No longer will the decision makers be judges and lawyers. They'll be moms and pops Mm -hmm. and the people they elect in office. And that's where we have the advantage and the pro-aborts know it. That's why they're melting down over this thing being thrown into the political arena. Mm -hmm. It becomes a grassroots issue and we are far stronger there than they are. And And they know it. And the pro-choice side is not just going after pro-life organizations. (laughs) This past week, we've seen them going after Catholic churches as well. Right. So this is not just limited to pro-life organizations. And of course, we see the media doing lots of fear-mongering about what will happen. We've seen articles talking about, well, what would this mean for these women who have miscarriages? Are women going to be arrested at state borders if they go to a different state to get abortions? I saw an article 
that was posted by Wired Magazine. And the headline reads, The ramification of Roe versus Wade fall won't stop at abortion bans. And the tagline says, In certain states, politicians could leap on the opportunity to push for the criminalization of certain methods of birth control and impair access to IVF. And it goes on to say that a lot of states, because of Roe versus Wade being overturned, it would send it back to the states, and then states' laws on abortion would take over. And a lot of states, fertilized eggs counts as life because that's the moment when life begins, the right? Fertilized egg, yeah. I mean, that's the only point it can begin. Right. So it gives legal protection to fertilized eggs. So according to this article, it says, not only does such terminology outlaw abortion, it could jeopardize access of certain forms of birth control, such as intrauterine devices, as well as emergency contraception like Plan B, because these can work after fertilization. Which is what we've been saying Mm -hmm. for years, and they've been lying through their teeth and saying it didn't work that way. Even in this article, it says, well, it prevents fertilization, but... If it doesn't. (laughs) If it doesn't. They also say it could impair access to IVF. Why? Because what happens with IVF? They fertilize multiple eggs, and then they eject a portion of them into a woman, and then the rest of them that are not used may sit there frozen for a while, but ultimately, in a lot of cases, they tend to be either destroyed or donated to a couple who can't. So the ones that are destroyed, that's abortion because right. you have terminated a fertilized egg. And of course, we've been saying this for years, mm-hmm. and they've been laughing mm-hmm. and saying, oh, you guys are nuts. You guys are nuts. It doesn't it, work that way. And yeah. now we have, because it fits their narrative, mm-hmm. they're changing their tune and yeah. making our argument. Exactly. It's amazing. And in this article, I couldn't believe it, but they actually even mentioned selective reduction. Yeah. They won't even talk about that because that's when it goes from, oh, well, we just only destroy the embryos that are not used. And that's not really abortion to talking about going in and aborting children that are in the womb because there's too many that have come implanted. Yeah. If you got a woman that's pregnant with 13 babies because of IVF, then you've got an issue right here. But uh, yeah, all of a sudden now. The science matters. It hadn't mattered now for many, many years, but yeah. all of a sudden it does. I just thought that was really interesting that they actually admitted, well, IVF is connected to abortion. And if you haven't already, I'll put the link to that episode that we talk about the truth about IVF. You right. should definitely go listen to that. Well, the good news is this is now a grassroots battle, or it's fixing to be as soon as this decision comes down. And If we, it comes down like it does. If it comes down like they're saying it will, and I think it will. I have to say that Clarence Thomas has come out and basically said, we're not going to be bullied. Right. So kudos to him. Well, I think that the pro boards, as they typically do, have overplayed their hand here. And instead of causing some of the people that maybe were on the fence or were winnable Mm -hmm. to change over to the pro-abortion side before the final decision, I think they've solidified it. Those people are saying, I'm not going to be threatened or intimidated or bullied by you. Yeah, because this deal of leaking this decision, that was intimidation. The leaking of their address is intimidation. Obviously, yeah. And even The View basically admitted this was intimidation. This is what they had to say. I would say this, though, on the issue of the Supreme Court, uh, it's enshrined in the First Amendment, you have the right to peaceably assemble. And that's so far what we're seeing outside of justices' houses. I will say this, I think the more appropriate venue is the steps of the Supreme Court. I worry it could begin to look like intimidation when it's at someone's doorstep. I'm someone... It's so funny. So does what uh, Alito wrote. Looks the same way to me. Looks like intimidation. (laughs) And and, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. But it it also uh, shows Alito what it feels like to lose your freedom of choice. He cannot leave the house easily, so maybe that's a good lesson for them. Well, and I will say... And the audience claps. And the audience claps. Yeah. We're entering a new phase. Mm-hmm. And um, the good news is, and I think this is another thing that the parole board see, they know that not only when it's sent back to the political arena is there a lie about pro-choice majority rhetoric, is that exposed as a lie, mm-hmm. but they know we're stronger on the grassroots. We are far stronger than they are at the grassroots. And as you know, you're one of the people working on it. We're working on a new project. We've talked about it here before. We'll get it out as soon as we possibly can. 
to show how we win in that environment, mm-hmm. to show people how they what their role can be, because all the rules are changing. Oh yeah, the judges and lawyers are not the final arbiters of this anymore. No, it takes place in the local communities and on the federal level. It takes place in the Senate and the House. And if you want to make an impact, you vote on those levels. You get those changes there. They're worried about the elections that are coming up, and they have a plan. So we need to be prepared. Absolutely. Yeah, all politics is local. Mm -hmm. That's an old axiom that's been said for many, many years, and it's true. But the good news is we have the advantage. We have to learn how to capitalize on that advantage, and that's what our project is -hmm. is attempting to do. It's taking a lot longer than what I had thought it would, but I'm really excited about it. But I want to propose another solution, a very simple solution before we get off the air. Okay? I have a feeling that this is going to be kind of smart alecky. Go ahead. <laughs> well, not really. I don't do that sort of thing. You know. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I have what I think is a perfect solution to this. Mm-hmm. Canada now is saying that if American outlaw abortion, mm-hmm. that they're going to basically become a cottage industry mm-hmm. like some states, California and New York are going to do. So it's not just the maple syrup anymore. It's come for abortion. Come to Canada for your abortions. I have a good solution. Okay. If all the pro aborts would just move to Canada, you're now <laughs> in a country that respects your right to kill your baby. Mm-hmm. We'll be tickled to death to see you go. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. The problem is solved. The Canadian solution is the way to solve this problem. And besides, a lot of these people, these starlets and Leon singers that you see coming out of Hollywood. Talking about how they leave and never seem to do. Most of them said Uh that they were going to leave the United States and go to Canada if Trump won. Well, he won and they stayed here. Not one of them left. (laughs) They looked at the tax rate in Canada and said, no, we're going to stay right where we are. Yeah. There was an interesting thing that came out, and I didn't put this in my notes, so I, I'm not going to refer to it too much. But one of these more liberal personality types did a show, and he was trying to talk about abortion and the Roe versus Wade deal, and actually did some research and found that America has more liberal abortion laws than even a lot of countries in Europe, right. oh, yeah, for most example. Of them. Yeah. And so he was surprised by the things that he learned about American abortion laws. Yeah, they say, I think if I remember right, he said there were only eight countries in the world Mm -hmm. whose abortion laws even approached being as liberal as American abortion law. Only eight countries in the entire world. Yeah. And that includes some pretty horrific countries. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. um, Anyway, I think the Canada solution, I like that. I mean, if you say so yourself, right. If I do say so myself, for one thing here in Texas, it would clean out Austin. You yeah, know, Austin be a ghost town. <laughs> Austin would be a ghost town. That's I'll right. See the tumbleweed rolling down South Congress. Yeah. And for people outside the state that don't know it, Austin is our embarrassment. It's kind of the Los Angeles of Texas. It's San Francisco of Texas. Or oh, San Francisco. It's sure. Berkeley. University of Texas now is Berkeley. Berkeley South, I guess you could call it. It's the South Campus for Berkeley. This Canadian policy of mine, which Mm -hmm. I think we need to really seriously think about this. If this Canadian solution were to work, it would clean out Austin, and we could start over down there. Travis County wouldn't be such an embarrassment to the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's move on. Everybody doesn't care about Texas politics like we do. But (laughs) Anyway, that's pretty much all we have. We'll be here again next Thursday. Mm -hmm. Until then, remember, Life Dynamics is not here to put up a good fight. Mm -mm, We're here to win. Because winning is how the killing stops. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.